Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice number theory problem with factorials. We have a times six factorial equals b squared. A and b are integers, and we're going to be solving for a and b. What else could we be solving for, right? So let's see how we can solve these kinds of problems. These problems are nice because it contains factorials as well as perfect squares. Cool. Now let's go ahead and start by doing the prime factorization for six factorial. How do you do the prime factorization for six factorial? If you like factorials and prime factorization, you can go ahead and check out my recent video. I made a video on a larger factorial with the prime factorization. Anyways, go ahead and check it out. Now, six factorial, you should probably memorize this or maybe you already did is 720 but let's go ahead and find out why that's the case and then see how we can do the prime factorization six factorial is basically six times five times four times three times two times one and if you multiply all these numbers together six times five is 30 30 times 40 is 120 120 360 720 okay that will be the answer or if you already knew that four factorial is 24 you can go off of that five times that is 120 which is five factorial and so on and so forth no matter how you do it you're going to end up getting 720 for six factorial and you may even know seven factorial is 5040 you don't have to memorize it but you know sometimes comes in handy so what do you do with this well we're going to do the prime factorization so let's see how we can do that for prime factorization, we're going to go ahead and split up each number, and we used this method recently, remember? 2 times 3, 5 is prime, 4 is 2 times 2 or 2 squared, 3 is prime, 2 is prime. So we can kind of write these as 5 to the first, this one as 3 to the first, this one as 2 to the first. Now if you put these all together, you're going to get 6 factorial equals. Now let's start with the 2's, since that's the smallest prime. A very special prime because it's even as well. 2 times 2 to the second power is 2 to the third times 2 to the first. That's going to give you 2 to the fourth. In other words, 16 is the largest number or power of 2 that goes into 720, right? How many times does it go? That's a good question. It doesn't look like it does go into 720, but anyways, it does. So the next one would be the 3, so we're going to write it as, notice that we have a 3 here and a 3 here. That's going to make 3 to the second power. And then we have the 5, there's only one 5, so we're going to write it as 5 to the first power. And that's it. Easy, right? This is a small number, and try 60 factorial, that's going to take longer. But with the method that I just mentioned in a previous video, you can do it quickly. There's a really nice shortcut. Anyway, so that's the prime factorization. What am I going to do with that? plug it into my equation, right? So a times six factorial will be replaced with two to the fourth, three to the second, and five to the first. Awesome. And remember, this is equal to b squared. Now notice that b squared is a perfect square because it has an even power. Which numbers are perfect squares? That would be a perfect question, right, at this point. Well, if you have a perfect square and look at the prime factorization, all the powers of primes have to be even, right? You don't want to have any leftovers. And in this case, we have b, we, and b doesn't have to be prime, by the way, it's just an integer, right? But if b was, let's say, 2 to the 3rd times 7 to the 4th, I don't know, I'm just make, I made it up, b squared would be 2 to the 6th times 7 to the 8th. Notice that because of squaring, all the powers are even. That's what you're looking for. So here, that concept is important because this is a number theory problem, and number theory basically just depends on the prime factorization of integers because it depends on integers. A lot of times the questions are like, how many divisors, how many factors, what is the sum of the div divisors, so on and so forth. All these questions depend on the prime factorization. You know, Euler's theorem and so many other things. Anyways, it's a huge topic, and... Let's get to work. So notice that this is an even power, and that's also an even power. But 5 to the first is not an even power. 1 is not even, right? But we can make it even really quickly by multiplying it by another 5, which is going to make it 5 squared. Awesome. So A can be 5, but it's just that 
one of the values that can happen, right? How do you find all the possible values? And how many values are there? Is there only one solution? Let's find out. First of all, a equals 5 is going to work. In other words, we need at least one 5 to make this a perfect square. And that just works perfectly. But if you multiply by other perfect squares, it's not going to hurt, right? I mean, the more the merrier. So we need at least one 5. In other words, a needs to contain 5, but it could also contain some other number squared. Let's call that number c. Don't worry, we're going to look at c closely, and we're going to actually uh, parameterize the solution, which means we're going to be able to write it in terms of a, a variable, which is c in this case. Make sense? So a equals 5c squared is a solution, and c is a positive integer. Can c be 0? And the answer is no, because in that case, a will be 0 and b will be 0. Well, it sort of works, but if you're looking for positive integers, that will be the case. So I'm going to put a little bit of positive, maybe union 0, which means 0 is also included. But we're not going to care about 0 because that's not that important, right? In this context, at least. So a equals 5 squared is a solution. What does that mean? It means that if, for example, c equals 1, then we get a equals 5. And if a is equal to 5, notice that we get something like this. b squared becomes 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 2nd, and 5 to the 2nd. Remember, I was telling you that we need at least one 5, and that complements the picture. Now, we can go ahead and square root both sides to find b. Easy to square root from the prime factorization. Just cut the powers in half, and you'll get the answer. And it's going to be 4 times 3 times 5, which is 60. So, b equals 60 is a solution for c equals 1. What is a in that case? Don't worry, we'll find out. So, let's go ahead and put this together. If b is 60, well, we already said c is 1, so that means a is 5. But that just means that 5 times 7, 20, which is 6 factorial, is going to be 3,600, which is 60 squared. Get the idea? Okay, cool. So, that works for our equation. In this case, this is a and this is b. All right? And this is 6 factorial, of course. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another value, which is not that close. But what if c is equal to 7? Then you're going to get a equals 5 times 49. Remember, that's c squared. And that's going to be 245. And if you plug it in, a times 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 2nd times 5 to the 1st equals b squared. If a is 245, in other words, which is 5 times 7 squared, then you're going to get something like this for b squared. You're going to get 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 2nd, and then 5 to the 2nd, but also 7 to the 2nd. So b from here is going to be 2 to the 2nd times 3 times 5 times 7. That's going to be 1260, and b would be 420. By plugging it in, you can also find the c or other values. Anyways, let's go ahead and express this in general form, let me write one more time, a times 2 to the 4th times 3 to the 2nd times 5 to the 1st equals b squared. And we just said that, okay, a is equal to 5c squared, right? Let's go ahead and plug that in. Instead of uh, replacing c with certain values, notice that the, this 5 is going to make this 5 squared. So we're going to end up with something like this, 2 to the 4th multiplied by 3 squared multiply by 5 squared, and then at the end we have times c squared. And that's equal to b squared. So if you square root everything, b is going to be 2 squared times 3 times 5 times c, or b is going to be 12 times 5, which is 60c. You see what I'm talking about? I hope you do. So the result is a equals 5c squared, and b equals 60c. So and c is an integer, and we just said positive integer, and you can include zeros if you want. But those are going to be all the values, which means there are infinitely many solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.